Okay, I'm making bitsagin or bitsagina or Easter pie, however you say it. And, you know, all Italians do things differently, and this is the way we do. Although, I don't really know how to do this. I'm kind of winging it. But I know what it tastes like. I've been eating it for years. How hard could it be? But And I'm using, like, a pie crust that's already done. If I did this on a regular basis, then I would definitely do it from scratch because, you know, it wouldn't matter because then you're eating it so often and stuff. But, you know, we have this so little, and this is so convenient. I have this pie crust, and I'm opening it up. And I'm putting it down on this little butcher block thing, right? And I, and I already got the pot cheese or regots. We call it pot cheese in my world. It's, you know, this is, it just happens to be polio because it was what on, was on sale. And um, I put two eggs in it and I stirred it up. And now it looks really nice and like kind of yellowish creamy. And I'm going to take just a little bit and put it on this pie crust. And then I'm going to take some cold cuts that I got. Now, normally, this stuff can be, like, really, really expensive to make, I hear from people. But it's because they buy, like, really expensive stuff to put in it. Like, there's something called gabagol. I don't know really what it is. It's some sort of a lunch meat. But, um, and I don't really know the way Americans would say it. But I've only heard it said as gabagol. Gabagol. So, um, I'm using salami. It tastes the same. Okay? So... I'm putting a um, slice of salami here, a slice of salami there, and then I'm going to get another, you know, little, like, spoon of this, and I'm going to spread it on top of the salami. And, oh, in here, I also had, I had an egg and um, grated cheese, you know, like macaroni cheese, um, parmesan. Now, I'm going to take a piece of cheese. Now, this is Munster cheese. I know it's not mozzarella, but to me, Munster and mozzarella is the same thing. So we're going to take a piece of Munster and another piece of Munster and put that there. And I think I'll put a piece of meat too. And I'm going to take ham. Now, I've always seen ham in it. And I think this is another thing that makes things really expensive because the kind of ham that they use. So I don't know what that is, but, you know, I've tasted it and it tastes just like ham to me. So... I'm taking this ham and I'm t putting a piece and I'm kind of folding it, you know, and there you go. Nice. And I'm going to take another, you know, scoop of this and just kind of put it on top of that. And I think I will do another, another thing of cheese on the top. But this time I'm going to use provolone. Where's the provolone? Here. This time I'm going to put provolone in there. So I'll do one. Can you see it good? Can you see it? With more cheese rather than less. So there. There. All right, there. And I'll put, you know what? I have pepperoni. What the hell? What the hell? Let's do some pepperoni. Because I think that, I don't know, that's kind of what double goal is, sort of. So I'll put some pepperoni on top of that. One, two, five. All right, so there's the pepperoni. So now I'm going to fold it up. Now I have, um, that's the sound of the door. I have egg white here. So I'm going to take some of this, my hand's clean, and put it on the inside of that and fold it over and fold this one over. And I, I think it's probably going to open up in the oven. You know, so now I'll glaze the top of it with it. And I put a little bit too much in there. Maybe I might have been able to roll this out a little bit more because it's kind of thick, the crust. Um, and I'm going to fold over this here. And then take that, the egg white, and put it on top. Fold over this. Put the egg white on top. And I'll show you what it looks like. All right, looks like that. See, looks good, right? So I'll put it in the oven, and then I will get back to you when it's done. But wait, let me show you how I'm going to put it in the oven. I'm going to use parchment paper, right? And I'm going to first take the parchment paper and put this on top of that. All right? So there, that's there. 
and I'm going to, you know, kind of like fold it up over on top of it. And I'm going to take a piece of foil, and I'm going to put this with the parchment paper on the foil. Let's see, I'll do it long way. And then this way, the top, what I'll do is I'll take this and this and meet it, and I'll fold it over. See? Just fold it over. And then fold this in and this in. And I'll put it in the oven like this. So this is like the necessity is the mother invention because I happen to be at my son's house cooking Easter dinner and he doesn't have cookie sheets, which is what I would put this on. So I thought, well, what will I do? And there was parchment paper here, and that was from when I was here last time, because you might be saying he has no cookie sheet, but he does have parchment paper. It's from when I was here last time and I baked. And um, so here's this, and I'm going to put it in the oven now, and I'll show you when it's all done. Okay, so here's my report on how it came. The, using the other kind of cold cuts on the inside of it, just regular salami and regular pepperoni and regular ham, really was perfect. You couldn't tell the difference on the inside. As a matter of fact, it was delicious. But the crust itself is flaky. And pizza bean crust is not flaky. So as soon as you, you know, saw it or cut into it, you knew this isn't pizza bean because pizza bean crust is more like heavy crust. It's thin, but it's heavy and it's not flaky at all. But this was really, really good for something that I would do for like the beginning of a party. Like maybe I would have this and cool it off and then slice it up and cut it into small edible, you know, finger food kind of pieces to have when you're having people over for a party or something. Another thing that it would be really good for too is if you were going to have wine and cheese and fruit and dessert and just something like this alongside with that, that would also be really nice. If you want the written recipe to this, then it's right here on this page. You just have to click and it will download for you. But if you're not part of my peeps, so you don't get my emails, if you go to my Facebook page, that would be the best way to get the download. Go to the Tidy Tutor Facebook page, here's a link right here, and find where this is posted on there, and post in there that you want the recipe. Give me your name and email, and I'll send it off to you. And so now we'll just see some of my kids' reactions, well, Emily's and Joey's reaction, to what they thought of it. Okay, Emily, let's see how you like the, the bean. Does it taste like pizza bean? Yeah. <laughs> Emily, what's pizza bean? This. <laughs> Joey, what do you think? Think of what? Of the faux pizza bean. Oh, the pizza bean? I don't know, I'll let you know in a minute. It's supposed to actually be in cold. Is it really? Yeah. Well, it's hot. Yo. No. <gasps> what do you think, Joe? Is it as good as Antina's pizza game? <laughs> <laughs> nope. I don't know about that. But does it taste like pizza game? It's actually really very good. I would have lost it if you just spit it out. Wow, <laughs> 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 it's too hot. <laughs> it is too <so> hot. <laughs> Got bugs, call the bug guy. You cook bacon, apple pie. If you show your picture, Jeff, clean or clean my underwear. These are the things we do. The house is a mess with all the junk. The sink's clogged up with dinner time gunk. You pick up the phone and call the road. Pretty good, mm -hmm. don't you?